photos of me because I need it for my own sort of stuff. But also take photos of other cool stuff and yourself that's happening today because that's probably more important than my own ego. Um, just, go, just use the hashtag Pioneers19 on social media. Be happy with it today. We'd love to see loads of photos when we go online tomorrow. Um, one of the things that I challenged people to do yesterday if you're up in base camp is to get a picture of yourself in a tent in base camp. Because to be honest, when in your life are you gonna be in a tent in the Hofburg, right? So if you are up there in base camp at any point today, I like challenge you to do that. But please use, um, please use that hashtag. And also the Wi-Fi password for anyone who hasn't been on the Wi-Fi yet is Pioneers19. One last thing is the masterclass and base camp locations. As you know, base camp is upstairs, sort of hidden right at the back. And the masterclass is just when you go through the working lounge, just through there. So, without further ado, because you're probably bored of me already, which is a shame, um, we are going to introduce our first speaker of the day. And this is a really, really exciting talk. Just chatting to Lior before, this is an interesting man. We're in for a very, very good discussion this morning. We're going to be talking about mastering the art of storytelling. Now, as entrepreneurs, this is something that is so, so, so important for us to be able to communicate our own message. Lior is going to tell us how. Uh, he's a founder and president of Lior Show Home Comms Limited, an international learning and development consultancy. They've worked in over 15 countries already, providing workshops, lectures, and coaching in storytelling, pitching, influence, charisma, networking, and leadership, if that list isn't long enough. For almost a decade, Lior has been enabling customers to move the needle and achieve better, tangible, and meaningful results. We're in for a really special talk. Let's give a huge round of applause for Lior as he comes to the stage. Let's keep that round of applause going. Good morning, everyone. Let's try this again. Good morning, everyone. You know that moment when people ask you, so, what do you do? And you have way too many things to say and way too little time to say it. You know that, mini that, that moment? Do you know that moment? Yes, okay. So what we're going to talk about today are two practical tools to tell your story in 30 seconds or less. So that two, th two things could happen. One, people get it. They understand what they do, what you do. But the second, and that's way more important, is that they want to hear more. What I'm trying to say is that in pretty much 20, 30 minutes from now, each and every one of you is going to get a tool to transform your pitch from push to pull. From trying to say everything you can and make hope something sticks, to be like a ninja. Just choose the right words with the right person at the right time and have them go like, whoa, wait, whoa, wait a minute. How do you do that? Sounds interesting? Yes, now all I have to do is deliver. <laughs> but before I move on, I want, I, wherever I do this around the world, I always do this short, short experiment. I'm going to about to ask you two questions. If the answer to the first question is yes, I ask you to raise your hand and keep it up. Okay, don't, don't take it down. Then I'm going to ask you a second question. If the answer is no, take your hand down. Okay, two questions, very simple. So, first question. If you have a job or you're an entrepreneur, please raise your hand. Good. Now, if your mother can explain what you do, keep it up. If you can't, take it down. <laughs> All your mothers can explain what you do. <laughs> okay. Big round of applause for the team here, because that's the most impressive number I've ever seen. If you were like me a few years ago, and your mother could not explain what you do, don't feel bad. It happens all the time. So the question is, why does it matter? Why should our mothers be able to give our pitch? Why should our mothers be able to tell our story? Why should our mothers be able to explain what we do? Well, first and foremost, this is a matter of values, because they're our mothers. And they've been giving us so much all throughout the years. And what do they want in return? Just the pleasure to sit around with friends, and when they all brag about their kids, to brag about us, right? So we owe them that much and, and make sure they know how to tell our story. But there's something more to it. There's something way more to it. You see, our mothers are our biggest fans. And they will kill for our success. And if our mothers, if our biggest fans, 
can't explain what we do, boy, we're in trouble. Because it means that many other people can't. So I'm about to tell you probably the most important thing I'm going to tell you this morning. So listen up, this is important. Every person that can't explain what you guys do is a lost ambassador. And it's your job to equip them with the right story to do so. And that's what we're going to do today. But before we move on, I would like you to pay attention to the name of this session. It's not Launchpad, it's called Walk the Talk, right? Walk the Talk. That's a very important concept when leading people into the unknown. And as entrepreneurs, that's what you guys do. You lead people into the unknown. So as a business owner, I have five employees. I lead sometimes people to the unknown. But moreover, I was a commanding officer in the Israeli Defense Force. So I know a thing or two about leading people into the unknown. And walking the talk, that's a very, very critical concept on your leadership skills. So one might ask, can I walk the talk? Or more importantly, can my mother tell my story? Can my mother explain what I do? How about we find out? I'm asking you guys to give a big, warm welcome to the most important, one of the most important women in the world, my mother, Varda Shaham. Let's give her a big round of applause. <laughs> Wait, wait a minute, come here, here, mama, okay. boy. <laughs> Make sure it's working, did you say? It's working. It's working. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Ima, are you excited? Yeah, very much. <laughs> I'm excited that I'm here and that I'm in Vienna. In Vienna, is this your yeah. first time? First time, but nice time. Are you enjoying <laughs> Did you have a strudel? Yeah, sure, wow, <laughs> can't you see? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's get down to business. Ima, can you, Ima is mother in, in Hebrew. Ima, can you explain what I do? Oh, you know, I think that some people, and I think most of the people, uh, they don't know how to explain what they do, and they don't know to stand on a stage. Okay. That's what I think. Okay. So? So? So you came, and you teach them. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> He teach them and I don't see him. <laughs> but after he teach them, you teach them, they know how to stand on a stage and how to explain what they do. That's all the point. That's all? That's all. You guys got it? Yes. Give a big round of applause for my mother. Thank you very much, Ima. Toda. Meripo. Toda, Ima. So, <laughs> I guess my mom walks the talk. So what if there was a code behind what my mother just did? What if there was uh, a mechanism of how to explain complex ideas in short and intriguing manner? Well, I believe there is. And what we're going to do today is we're going to give you those tools to tell your story in a way that your mother can explain to your network. Because think about it. You can be sitting here right now, and your mothers, and your friends, and your colleagues, and your employees, and your investor could be working for you. Your network could be working for you with their network, telling them about your story. And then maybe in that broad network of networks, just maybe, there's the right person you're looking for. The right investor, the right partner, the right person. So the question is, how do we do this? And I would like to tell you a story about one entrepreneur. Let's go. We're getting down to business right now. We're going to start doing this tool. So about four or five years ago, I don't remember, I helped an entrepreneur to give a talk, I think it was here in Vienna, in a green energy. It was a, a conference about green energy. And <laughs> he explained to me what he does. He's in the business of electrical, electrical efficiency for water treatment factories. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so not very sexy. And he explained to me what he does for 45 minutes. I didn't understand a word. I didn't understand a word. Seriously, it's, maybe it's me, but I didn't get it. And then he had a challenge because he only had three minutes. So what do you do, right? But we worked hard and he did most of the heavy lifting. But we came up with this pitch, and I invite you to listen up, because what he did was pretty brilliant. He went up on the stage and he says, good afternoon, everyone. 2% of the entire world's electrical consumption is dedicated to water treatment. 2%, that's a lot of electricity. And 80% of the factories that treat water are small to medium enterprises, SMEs. My company reduces the, electric the electricity bill for SMEs that treat water 
by 90%. If you want to know how, that's my booth. Thank you very much, got off the stage. Write this down, because this is going to be in the exam. You make a story in three numbers. The first tool I would like to share with you today is you want to pick the right three stories that tell your story in a meaningful manner. So often people ask me, what do those numbers should represent? Leo, okay, three numbers, but what three numbers? Because you have so many of them, right? So here's the thing. The numbers should communicate one of these things. A, a monstrous pain. A huge problem you solve for your target audience, for your customers, for your partners, for your employees, whatever, whoever it is you're targeting in your pitch. So you should talk about a monstrous pain. A second option about what numbers you, you should do is a massive potential. 2% of the entire world's electrical consumption is dedicated to water treatment. 80% of those factories are SMEs. That's a huge addressable market. And the third type of number you want to put in there is the humongous value you bring to your customers. It's the answer to why should anyone care. It's the answer to what's in it for me. But here's the beauty. Did this person, did he explain how he, s he lowers the electrical bill by 90%. Did he talk about the how at all? Not at all. So here I want to quote something really smart. Someone really smart. Uh, anyone ever heard of Harlan Coben, the, the author? He's, he, he wrote numerous, uh, uh, numerous best-selling books. And I listened to a podcast with him about storytelling, and he was asked the question. He said, Harlan, how do you create suspense in your book? How do you get people to want to keep on reading, to transform, to push, to pull, that they want to read. And he said an interesting concept, and I invite you to write it down. He said, a missing person is more interesting than a body. A missing person is more interesting than a body. If someone's dead, the story is done. But where is that person? So when you communicate what you do in 30 seconds or less, try to leave something out. I like to quote uh, a good friend of mine. Her name is Elsa. Anybody maybe saw her in the movies? She says, let it go, let it go. Let go of some of the information. People don't need to understand everything you do. All you got to do is capture their attention and get them be like, whoa, what, whoa, how do you do that? So leave them wanting more. And just another quick example about a story in three numbers, and we'll move on to the second tip that I have for you today. I uh, had the privilege and honor to work with a researcher, a brilliant and inspiring researcher. His name is Dr. Noam Shomron. Dr. Noam Shomron um, researched in his lab in Tel Aviv University a breast cancer. And he published his groundbreaking work, and he was published in Nature. Nature of Science, I don't remember which one. And he was obviously invited to give a TED Talk, so I coached him to give a TED Talk. That's what I do. And we wanted to tell people how things are just not working well, how things are just going wrong. And we didn't know how to do it. And Noam came with this brilliant way to say it. He went up on the stage and said something in, in those lines. He said, every year in the US alone, we spend $700 million on research of breast cancer. $700 million every year. And we've been doing so for decades. How does the mortality rate have been influenced? 0.3% improvement. <laughs> We're just failing our daughters and sisters and mothers. So that's exactly what my team in Tel Aviv University and I are doing. We're researching the question, is there a better way to treat breast cancer? I invite you to Google him. He's doing groundbreaking work about treating breast cancer. Again, did no Dr. Noam Shomron talk about the how? Not at all. Can we understand it in 30 seconds? Absolutely not. It's so advanced. But no one needs to understand everything you do. You just need to tell them what's the big picture, what is it generally that you do, and what's the value you present. So we're done with a story in three numbers. And that's the first tool. I promised you two tools today, right? Let's move on to the second one. The second one is a three-step solution to communicate anything on this planet. Let's go it one by one. You say, you know how. That's how you really say You see, it's in quotation marks. You really start by saying, you know how, and you describe a problem. And here I like to say, talk about the pain. Don't just aim for the head, aim for the heart. Make them feel there's a huge problem out there that no one is addressing. After you talk about the problem, you need to talk about? About? About the solution. So you say, so what we? 
So what we do, so what we design, so our last feature, our recent release, what we do in my company is, and this is a great place to mention your company's name. It's a great place to put your company's name. Try to say it twice. That's what we do at Brizometer. At Brizometer, we're doing blah, 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 one of my clients. A few things about the solution, big picture, one up to two lines, no more. Just give them a, a, a general perspective about what it is that you do, just generally. And please, it's hard to listen to any more of those NLP, AI, machine learning, drones, okay? Try to go beyond the lingo. Try to go beyond the lingo. And it leads me to part number three of your elevator pitch. If you want to tell your story and you want people to remember it, the part number three is the most important part, but many entrepreneurs forget it, and it's a shame because it's so simple. And this is the reason w that people want to hear more. You guys ready for these two brilliant words? So that. And you talk about the impact. It's that simple. If in part two you talk about what you do, in part three you talk about what they gain. I repeat, if in part two you talk about what you do, in part three you talk about what they gain. What's the value of what you're doing? What is the impact you create for your customers? Why should anyone care? I work with Techstars and Barclays Bank, and I work with their uh, accelerator. And one of their entrepreneurs came up to me and says, I said, OK, give me your elevator pitch. And they say, OK, Leo, um, today you can either have a fixed mortgage rate or an adjustable mortgage rate. I'm like, OK. We enable banks to offer a combined one. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> No, seriously, like, who cares? I was like, okay, so what? And they're like, what do you mean? I said, I don't get it. So they do again, say, okay, Leo, uh, today you can either get a fixed rate or an adjustable rate on mortgage rate. We help banks to offer a, a, a combined solution. And I'm like, so that? And they say, so that you can save on your mortgage rate and banks can be more secured. I said, thank you very much. It's that simple. Now, those of you who are sharp, already noticed that you've heard this methodology before. Who used this methodology today? Who used on this stage this methodology? I did. I did. Good. What's your name? Andre. Andre, Andre right. I said at the beginning of my talk, what did I say? I say, you know that moment when you have people ask you, so what do you do? And you have too many things to say and too little time to say it? So what we're going to talk about today is to tools for elevator pitch so that A, people understand what you do, and B, they want to hear more. Now, anyone ever filled his tire or her tire uh, in, her co in your car with, with air, with, with pressure? You need to measure pressure. What's the name of the, of the, of the code? It's like a P, PSI. Who said that? Yeah, okay, you got a PSI. You got to use the PSI. PSI is pressure per square inch or pound per square inch, but also PSI is the elevator pitch. PSI is problem solution impact. And that's the tool number two. So write this down, because this is going to be in the exam. Uh, <laughs> if you want your pitch to move just like a tire, it needs to have the right PSI. No PSI, your pitch is going nowhere. Simple. But Andre, you know who else used this methodology? One of the most important women in the world. My mom. Remember, she came up on the stage, and my mom said, Leo, some people, most people, don't know how to stand on the stage and explain what they do. So, you teach them. <laughs> so they can be on the stage and explain what they do. So, we're in the family, we're in the business of walk the talk. <laughs> so we try to, to do what we can. So, we've talked about two tools, a story in three numbers and a PSI. So simple, so clean, so easy. And the beauty of it is that when you use these tools, any person can get it, and any person can retell your story. This has the potential to go viral. It's good for online, but it's also good for face-to-face. -face. But I like to quote smart people, and uh, in the 1960s, there was a golf player. His name was uh, Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer. He was a golf player. He was like the Michael Jordan of golf. Won many championships with this champion. And in one of his very successful years, he was invited to, uh, to an interview. So it was the end of the year, and he goes up and sits with the interview, and he says, Mr. Palmer, you had a very successful year. You won tournaments, championships, trophies, medals. You're a very lucky person. 
he looks at the interviewer and he says, you know something interesting? The more I practice, the luckier I get. <laughs> and why am I telling you this concept? Because I can stand here on stage and tell you more Boba Mices and stories about how other people gave their pitch, but that's not really interesting. So I'm asking each and every one of you to take a minute right now, because we're going to exercise this, and create your own elevator pitch using one of these tools, three numbers or the PSI. So we're going to take right now 60 seconds for you guys to wrap your, your thoughts around it, and then we're going to ask someone to go on the stage and give us his pitch. So take a second. I'm taming you. 60 seconds, go. Yes, absolutely. PSI? The one with my mother? Oh, <laughs> no. the dumbbells for working out, you know. I, I thought long and hard what picture I'm going to put up there. <laughs> I want to show you how I'm going to lose eye contact from about 120 people in five seconds. Are you guys ready to see how I'm losing eye contact? Who wants to volunteer and go up on the stage? <laughs> Not all at once. Yes, what is your name, sir? Michael. Michael. Big, a big round of applause for Michael. Come on. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much. Wait a minute. Got this? <laughs> okay, thanks. So, Michael, uh, what do you do? Uh, yeah, okay. So, good, uh, good afternoon. No, it's not afternoon, so nice day. Good morning. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Michael Dresner. I'm CEO of Threadmark, and this is my 30-second pitch. So, the banks in Europe only lose millions of euros a year for two-factor authentication by letting users retype the SMS passwords from their mobile phone to the internet banking applications. Uh, we at Redmark provide a solution that analyzes the user behavior in real time, and we are able to distinguish the real legitimate user from a fraudster. And by applying this solution, the banks can save up to 90% of cost for these SMS authentications. So this is the Threadmark solution. And by applying this uh, approach, the banks can not only save money, but they will also build a higher level of trust with the users. And the users are, let's say, conveniently authenticated because they don't need to retype any uh, SMS passwords. Thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, Michael. Wait, 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 wait. First, first of all, Michael, First of all, Michael, thank you very much, and uh, I want you to hold this. I want to give you a, a quick feedback, guys. Did you understand the massive problem? Yes. Did you understand generally the solution? Good. And what was the best part? We help banks save how much? 90%. So that was very good. Next time, I have something to, to suggest. Can I, can I suggest something even better? Sure. Okay, you want them to think about themselves. So one of the things you can do is say, you can say, you know that annoying part where you, you want to log on to your bank and you've got to get another message and another text message and another text message? That's not just a problem for you. It costs banks 200 million every year. So you can make me feel something, but I say, that's not just about you. Banks suffers from it as well. And then you can go back at the end and say, that way not only you will log in quicker, but banks can save 90% or more. And then say, thank you, drop the mic, and you leave storming outside the stage. <laughs> Okay, a round of applause again. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And good luck. Thank you.
<laughs> I wish we had time for more, but I was told at uh, 11, 10 I have to finish. So I would like to uh, finish with a quick, quick summary of what we talked about today and leave you with one more thought. I would like to finish with the most important thing I, tell, I told you today. And I invite you to remember. In fact, if you can only remember one sentence from everything I said, I invite you to remember this sentence. Every person that can tell your story is a lost ambassador. And you have the tools to change that. If you just give them the right story, your network can work for you. And they can tell their network. And they can tell their network about the magnificent story which is, your which is your startup. All you gotta do is give them the tool. Now obviously, it looks wonderful here, it takes some time and it takes some effort. And I wanna say something else, sometimes you are expected to elaborate. So a 30 second speech is no good, and that's okay. But if you work really hard a lot for a not a long time, you can create a significant change. And speaking of working hard, it reminds me of this guy. And this is the last thing I'm going to tell you. Once upon a time, I'm going to finish with the story, of course, right? Once upon a time, many, many years ago, lived a master in mar of martial arts in the outskirts of Tokyo, Japan. He was a master samurai who never lost a battle. And it was important for him that his legacy will live on after his checking out from this world. So one day he looks in the mirror and he sees some gray hair and some wrinkles, says, hey, I'm not getting any younger. I got to find a student that's going to be the next master of martial arts. So he walks down to the pagoda he, he owned. He had a school on the first floor, and he picked his best student. Strong, fast, big heart. Someone who's worthy of becoming a master. And he started coaching him. For 20 years, he coached him. Anybody saw the movie uh, Karate Kid? Wax on, wax off. Anybody saw Kill Bill? In Kill Bill, he beats her up with a stick, you know, makes her carry water up the stairs. So for 20 years, kicked his ass, <laughs> just killed him, and coached him. And when the 20 years went by, the graduation ceremony was about to begin. It was the top floor in the master's pagoda, and he was sitting there, old, black belt in front of him, lights of candles all behind him. And the student, not so young anymore, went up, bowed before the master, and the closing ceremony was about to begin. And the master, looks at the student and says, young man, before you can get this belt, there's one more test you have to go through. And this is an emotional one. This is a mental one. The student was, okay. What does this black belt represent for you? Cut him off guard. Scratches his head, operating the brain manually. <laughs> he said, you know, master, this is the finish line. For 20 years, you've been coaching me. Now, after 20 years, this is the graduation ceremony, and I've graduated my learnings, and now I'm fully master. I can go out to the real world and become a master. And the master says, you're not ready. Go back to your coaching. Come back one year. And in that year, he beats him up with a stick and walks on and walks off. And in the end of that year, he comes by, and it's a graduation ceremony. And there's candlelights all around him. And the master is old, and he's sitting in the black belt, and, they, and then he says, my son, before you get this black belt, what does it represent for you? He said, master, listen, I got it. This is a token of excellency. Now that I finished learning with excellency, with honors, I can put on the belt and join the small group of masters who have graduated with honors. And he says, you're not ready. Go back to school. Come back one year. And in that year, he beats him up, walks on, walks off. But he also makes him look inside and reflect and think deep about what he's just gained. And at the end of that year, the young, not so young student comes up and he breaks down the door and says, Master, don't ask the question because I know exactly what is the answer. And the master says, if you know exactly, then I'm listening. He said, I thought long and hard and this black belt represents for me a line. But it's not a finish line, it's a starting line. It doesn't represent the end of my journey of becoming a master, but merely the beginning. And this black belt right here is a token of the tools I received from you, master, as I go out to the real world and apply what I've learned. Because the sign of a true master is not how good I am today, but it's how much better I can be tomorrow. That is a true master. And the master was happy with his answer and he gave him the, the black belt. And, and why am I telling you this story? Because this is the end of my talk. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, it's not <laughs> but it's not the finish line, but merely the starting line. 
Each and every one of you received two practical tools on how to communicate anything in 30 seconds or, le or less. But this is not the end, it's merely the beginning. And I invite each and every one of you, as you walk out through this door, to don't walk out the same way you walked in. Take what you've learned here and breathe life into it. The more you use it, the better it's going to become. And if you can go out there and apply what you've learned and become better with each and every day that goes by, that for me is the sign of a true master. And if you do that, then maybe, just maybe, your mother can explain what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Lior. You're welcome. And actually, Thank you. like, Lior, that was an incredible speech. I was taking notes. I'm sure so many of us in the room were. We've got time, if that's okay. Sure. We've got time for just two questions from the audience. So if anyone's got a burning question whilst Lior's still here on the stage, just raise their hand and I'll come and bring the mic round. I saw your hand go straight up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Should I sit? Okay, thank you, cool. Okay. Uh, hey, hi. Hi, I'm Paul, uh, and I have a question. Uh, how would you uh, use uh, this, um, this kind of approach if you can solve actually two problems with one mm. solution? So the question, if you have one solution, but you actually solve two, can you elaborate what are the two solutions you, uh, you offer <laughs> if, if you already have the microphone? Okay, like, uh, I would like to... Uh, Save money and save the environment at both times with one product. Save money and? Save money and save the environment. Save the environment? Exactly. Okay. So I'm going to give you two things. First, when you, on the short answer, w you remember the so that, the last part of the PSI? Now we have the secret language with people outside of PSI. What's a PSI? Huh? <laughs> so you can just say so that not only you can save a lot of money on your credit card bill, yeah. but also save the environment. Okay. Da, da, da. Not only. Okay. Yeah, not only, but That's also. Good. That's okay. like the technical thing. Yep. But also in the problem, and I think we did it with Michael, so you describe on the, on the personal problem, also on the problem side. So every time you use your phone, I don't know if you know that, but you can save a lot of money. But your spending is not just damaging your pocket. It's also damaging the environment. The environment. That's where we come in. My company's name is Sharkbag. Sharper. Yeah. And at Sharper, what we do is... We combine the advantages of electrical cars and bicycles in one product. So that... So that you can save 80% of... Uh, you, so that you can save 80% of uh, your expenses and not, o uh, and and not only and save your environment or... Something. Close enough, Paul. Yeah. Give him okay. a big round of Thanks. applause. Yes. Good job. <laughs> Good. Paul. Paul, okay? Thank you, Paul. We've got one, time for one more question, if anyone else has got one for Lior. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, um, how do you uh, make uh, a story around something that's so special that it's hard to find like a common denominator with everyone, mm. somehow, if it's very technical, for example? Mm -hmm. So what's your name? Alex. Alex. Alex, if I heard correctly, the question Alex was asking, so you, your solution is very, very, very technical. How do you create people like engagement and people realizing it? So one of the, so I'm, I'm giving here like quick answers, obviously, if you, if later on. One of the things is you can use a metaphor. So let's say you're helping engineers uh, and developers, you know, develop faster, whatever. And say, you know, for some people, developing an app is like a marathon. So much training, so much thought, so much, and they get, and then people can get the metaphor. So that's one thing. And two, you can use Imagine. But Imagine, <laughs> imagine got a bad name, because some people say, Imagine every child around the planet. Not, not, none of that. <laughs> okay, you can just say, Yo, imagine you need to. So, what is your solution? Uh, we help manufacturers of AGVs, so mobile robots, uh, to extend the autonomous functionalities of their robots. To exact the autonomous uh, functionality of their robots. So imagine you create uh, autonomous vehicles, but they're not very accurate. That's kind of a problem, right? So that's where we come in. So you just simplify it, like, yeah. and you make me feel like I'm doing it. Imagine you have a factory for UVs. Okay. They're yeah. supposed to be accurate. They're not really. You're in a problem. Well, that's where we come in. 
So you make me imagine like it's my own. Was, okay. was that helpful? Yeah, very much. Thanks Perfect. very much. Thank you, Alex. Great. And thank you so much. Let's get another round of applause for Lior, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. I feel like the master has just given you the black belt. Um, that was an incredible speech. Please do find Lior if you see him around. Have a chat with him. He's an extremely wise man.